Good afternoon. I'm Lauren Rush. Welcome to the news briefing from the 254th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Washington, D.C. We are joined today by Dr. Jonathan Scheiman from Harvard Medical School. He has been studying the microbiomes of elite athletes and rowers to identify bacteria that could help aid athletic performance. Dr. Scheiman. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here and talk about and present our work. Um, so I just always like to start sort of with my background um, and how I got into this research. I was a former basketball player. I played ball at St. John's. We won a Big East championship, NIT championship. I wanted to play in the NBA. I didn't make it, so my backup was getting a PhD in molecular biology. Uh, that's how I became a scientist. Um, but for me, I think I've always been excited about bridging together the sports and science communities in ways that are functional, profitable, and ultimately educational. Um, so I've been at the Harvard Medical School the past five and a half years. I work in a lab that develops technology to read genetic information in our bodies. Uh, and we're applying this technology to basically understand what makes elite athletes unique and function at an optimal level, uh, and then extract that information to help them as well as others. In particular, we're sequencing the microbiome of elite athletes to identify and isolate novel probiotics that we could then uh, use for applications in performance and recovery. Um, so many people know uh, the microbiome. It's a community of microorganisms in and on our body. We're essentially more bacteria than we are human. And this collective community, in particular in the gut, greatly influences our health, development, functionality, um, even has implications in disease for processes such as energy metabolism, protein metabolism, neurology, and immunology. Um, so at Harvard, over the past two years, we've recruited athletes, we've sequenced their biomes, compared them to non-athletes, I've identified distinct microbial communities, differences in athletes by sport, and really excitingly, we've followed athletes in a longitudinal manner between performance and recovery phases to track how their personal microbiome changes over time. Um, so we're really excited with some of the discoveries we've made and looking forward to continuing that and hopefully bringing it out into the real world as well. All right, are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking a question. Hi, so it's Kath O'Driscoll and it's from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Can you tell me a little bit more about some of the differences between the bacteria in the elite athletes and how that changes? You mentioned you, you've yeah. changed it during the performance and after the performance. Yeah, so um, actually the first study we did was a couple of years ago uh, for the 2015 Boston Marathon. Um, I always say this, uh, basically we recruited around 20 athletes competing in the race as well as around 20 sanitary controls, aka scientists. Um, but basically we collected fecal samples on a daily basis. So just to backtrack, um, if we want to analyze bacteria in our gut, we need to collect samples that passage through the GI tract. Fun fact, uh, fecal material is around 60% uh, by weight bacteria. So there's a lot of information in there that we could harvest to sort of understand what's going on in our biology. Um, so for the Boston Marathon, I basically went around driving around Boston five hours a day collecting fecal samples uh, from people two weeks before and after the marathon. Fun stuff. Um, but then uh, we were able to sequence their biomes and the bacteria in their gut. And one thing that we found that was really exciting is right after the marathon, there's a spike in the abundance of this one bug that in particular breaks down metabolites associated with fatigue and soreness. Um, so this was pretty cool because this metabolite is associated uh, or accumulates in the body, in the blood after strenuous exercise. So basically, we identified a bug almost as a natural response to exercise that can maybe help break down and clear this bacteria, uh, these metabolites from the system. Was it just the one bug and did that appear just after? I mean, what about during the performance? Uh, do you know anything about what happens during? Yeah, so I think our resolution in terms of time series is basically limited to when samples are essentially produced. So there are some cases where we could collect samples during a performance, although it's a little rare. More, more times than not, we collect one or two samples a day. Um, this bug, I should say, is something that dramatically increased in abundance right after the marathon. Um, and again, uh, the notion that it's natural um, 
functionalities to break down this metabolite associated with fatigue, we see it as potentially like a recovery mechanism in the body. But a pretty cool application is, well, what if we isolated this bacteria, which we've already done, we purify it, and now potentially could give it back to athletes as a probiotic to help maybe prevent fatigue and promote endurance. And I should also say, we've gone on to see this in numerous athletes beyond Boston Marathon runners. So it's something that seems to be universal in all athletes. Can you put any statistics on how much you think that this might increase performance? Yeah, so, you know, I think it's all relative. Um, so as I always say, you know, if you, I think everything helps, right? I think elite athletes are always looking to um, improve their performance, improve their recovery, extend their careers. Um, you know, for instance, if this is something that could even improve performance by 10%, I think that would be dramatic. Um, you know, the metabolite that we're interested in, I think 10% of it is typically cleared by the gut. So can we sort of enhance that, you know, filtering this metabolite from the blood? And even if it's just 10%, I think that would be pretty significant. And how would, if you did develop a probiotic from this, how would that be considered by the regulatory bodies? I'm just thinking, how would you distinguish that then from some of these chemicals that affect performance sports? Sure, well the great thing about probiotics, it's an industry that's been around for a long time, so we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, certainly for our applications, we're interested in nutraceuticals and uh, sports nutrition. I should say probiotics is a $60 billion market. I should say 90% of that market consists of two types of bacteria. We have trillions of bugs in our gut that greatly influence our health, literally waiting to be discovered to disrupt this industry. And that's what we're doing. Um, you know, certainly for us, the path, path forward is after identifying these bugs, purifying them, doing some functional studies to validate them, showing that they're safe, doing toxicology studies, uh, and then there's something that we believe we could bring to market. And certainly if we're making functional claims, then doing functional validation studies to, to validate them. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hi, I'm Tom Rickey. Um, so I'm, I'm with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, so I'm, I'm not quite straight media, but sure. I cover a lot of microbiome research. And I was just curious, certainly you, um, you are or were an, an elite athlete yourself. Um, have you ever measured your own microbiome before and after whatever, or, or your friends and colleagues or former <laughs> basketball playmates or whatever? Well, first thing I could say is I wasn't an elite athlete, or else I wouldn't be a scientist. But, uh, you know, um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, for us with our study, you know, at Harvard in particular, the Wyss Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering, you know, we follow an IRB protocol, we sign up athletes, and there's certainly a recruitment process. Um, certainly, there are some colleagues in the Institute that also happen to be athletes that were involved in the study as well. But I think for us, more than just sequencing biomes, and certainly I think I have a, a fair understanding of what my microbiome looks like, having worked on this for several years. Um, I think really the exciting thing for me is going back into the athletic community, um, going back into the basketball community and telling them what we're doing. Um, <laughs> you know, last summer we were in Rio for the Olympics, uh, recruiting uh, Olympic athletes for our study, and I could just say that it's always a fun conversation uh, trying to recruit elite athletes to give you their fecal samples. Um, I don't lead with that. I normally lead with, hey, I'm John Scheiman from Harvard Medical School, but I think this community in general is very open to the science. They're excited about it. They're looking for ways to improve their, their health, performance, and recovery, and I think um, we have a, a lot of willing participants. Dr. Dallimore, American Chemical Society. Doctor, I'm wondering if this research would have any benefit for uh, non-elite athletes, like someone who has been sedentary and is just starting to exercise. I'm thinking that part of the, the discouragement is, oh gosh, I'm so tired and I ache. And, and I'm wondering, a 10% increase improvement in your, uh, in your ability to not feel fatigue would be really um, important with this particular um, group of people. Yeah, so thank you for, answer, for asking that question. So I think, you know, I come from a biomedical background. I think if you look at next generation sequencing, genomics, biotechnology, a lot of times 
we're using that technology to look at and understand diseased physiology um, or dysbiosis for purposes of correcting that. But, and that's, that's great, it's necessary. I think we're taking an opposite approach. We're looking at the biology of the most fit and healthy people in the world and what makes them unique and you know, perform at an optimal level. Can we extract that information to help others? Certainly there are gonna be applications beyond athletics. Certainly you don't have to wanna to play in the NBA to be more fit, to be more healthy. I mean, we're talking about applications in you know, energy metabolism. You know, there, right now there's microbiome research related to obesity, diabetes, uh, with regards to the immune system, inflammation, both you know, in the gut and in distal locations. So maybe ways to prevent inflammation, gut brain access, um, protein metabolism, helping us digest uh, amino acids and absorb them better. Certainly, we are very excited about um, you know, not just athletics or even high performance athletes, but having this for everyone, promoting health and general health and wellness for the masses. Uh, Bela Buslik, ACS uh, Communication. Um, how does the, uh, the diet of the, uh, the athletes, uh, because it's got sure. to interact. Not all athletes eat sure. the same things. Sure. And, and, you know, uh, there's, there's all kinds of uh, thoughts of, of carbohydrate loading or sure. whatever have you before. Uh, it, it's, it's got to have, to have a dramatic difference sure. between the athletes and uh, of course, you need a large sample to be able to, to sure. generalize. Sure, absolutely. So certainly with regards to microbiome compositions, um, personal genetics, um, environmental exposure, exercise, diet, all play major influences on the composition and function of our microbiome. What I should say is in addition to collecting fecal samples, we also collect a ton of metadata. So all of our participants, they fill out questionnaires that tell us about their athletic, their health, and their dietary backgrounds. Every day we collect a fecal sample, we also collect uh, tons of information about what they ate for breakfast, lunch, dinner, what their workouts are, their intensities, how they feel, how many hours they slept. So we collect all of this data. So when we do the computational analysis, we could specifically look for bugs that are most closely associated with performance and recovery. Um, you know, I'll also say one thing, and by the way, I go back to this bug that um, you know, breaks down uh, fatigue-associated metabolites. That's something that we found in all of our athletes, independent of their diet. Um, so that's something that seems to be a universal sort of phenomenon in response to strenuous exercise. Um, you know, my other response too is, you know, these elite athletes, maybe they do have different diets that enable a beneficial microbiome. That's okay too. We're looking for bugs that are beneficial, that we could isolate, prove their functionality, and then give them to other people that may not be high performance or may not have the means to have an elite diet. Have you looked at non-athletes for the same bug? <laughs> um, yeah, we've had some non-athletes, scientists, um, sedentary controls. Um, so again, there are things that we found um, you know, they're not exercising, so we haven't been able to do a before and after, but certainly we found bugs that have altered abundance that are anti-correlated with inflammation. Um, this bug that I mentioned after the marathon, it's lower levels in sedentary controls, which kind of makes sense because they're not working out. Um, I should also say by athletes, different athletes by sport. So for instance, we sequenced the biome of rowers competing for the Olympics. We've sequenced the biome of ultra marathon runners, people that run 100 miles at a time. And for instance, in ultramarathon runners, we see bugs at an elevated level that break down carbohydrates and fibers that are not in Olympic rowers. And it kind of makes sense from a form fits function standpoint, because if you're going to run 100 miles for a competition, you probably want a microbiome that could help harvest energy from food. Um, so I think we're looking to all these things, and I think we're just get, getting started, but we're excited to expand our cohort. Thank you. Um, so the press release also mentions that you're um, starting up a company. Sure. Could you say a little bit more about that and where the funding will come from and also what the first product might be? Sure. Um, so yeah, again, I'll say I am currently, so this company is called Fit Biomics. Um, you know, we're the world's first sports biotechnology company and, you know, we're sequencing the microbiome of elite athletes to identify and isolate novel probiotics that we could then commercialize and disrupt nutrition. 
We're currently incubating at the Wyss Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering at Harvard University. Um, and again, you know, our mission statement is to commercialize technology into real world applications. So we've essentially uh, had the resources to do the research, uh, business development, commercialization strategy all through the Institute. Um, you can certainly find out more information on our webpage. Um, we're hoping to launch the company in the fall. Uh, we're now, in addition to doing the science, currently recruiting the best athletes in the world to join our venture. We're currently fundraising, uh, looking to close around by the fall and launch the company and spin out. Um, as far as first probiotics, I think we see ourselves as doing a couple of things in parallel. One is commercializing the discoveries we've made at Harvard. So I mentioned this bug that we identified in marathon runners, as well as some other bugs that we've identified and have IP with. Um, we believe after launching the company, we could get you know, our first probiotic to market within a year or so, uh, give or take. Obviously, this is science. Things could be accelerated. Um, at the same time, as I mentioned, we're expanding our cohort of athletes to continue sequencing and building out sort of our data uh, and strain bank. I was interested also in the effects on the mind. Um, sure. And something in the press release, I think there's a quote that sort of implies that the um, bacteria might be involved in kind of stamina or in kind of this mental sure. attitude of, uh, of uh, athletes. C can you say something about that? Have you identified any bugs that potentially could have an impact on the brain? Sure. Well, one thing is I think in terms of our body and our mind, it's all connected. So for instance, if you're not fatigued, you might be able to think more efficiently and vice versa. Um, so the discoveries we've made at Harvard, I think, are related to, again, uh, endurance, uh, uh, recovery, anti-inflammation, and even protein metabolism, um, and even energy metabolism. Uh, I think for us, if you look at the gut-brain axis, which is a f you know, field in the microbiome research, there's a lot of exciting um, you know, papers out there in the literature that show the bugs in our gut synthesize neurotransmitters that are relevant for anxiety, depression, um, neurological functionality. There are implications in the microbiome as it relates to um, pathological conditions associated with the brain. So, you know, in all these processes, energy metabolism, protein metabolism, immunology, neurology, for us, we see them for applications in endurance, mental toughness, um, strength, recovery. So we're absolutely interested in all those applications. All right. If there are no more, no further questions, thank you. The archive version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS live underscore DC. Please join us for our next press conference at 1.30 p.m. today on new technology that reveals the hidden artistry of ancient paintings. Thank you.